Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first video that I've done in a while in my Creating a Digital Mind series and that's because I've been hard at work experimenting with a different setup for my system. Now I wasn't experimenting just for the sake of experimentation which I think can happen a lot of times when you're trying to build something new but I was running into some very specific friction points that made me take a step back and kind of rethink how I was doing things. And those friction points were, I felt like I was spending more time managing my notes than I was actually writing or engaging with them. And that ended up with making evergreen notes not being a very enjoyable part of the process. And I mean, that is where the work is supposed to happen. So if I'm not enjoying that part where I'm connecting ideas, making insights, writing things more in my own words, then it wasn't going to be a system that had legs and that was going to last for a long time. I also found that it was hard to get a overall sense of the knowledge that I had. And what ended up happening was I had a lot of notes that were similar, but weren't coming in close enough contact to either be connected or consol consolidated into one. And so I had these clusters of notes around that were kind of just individual pockets of thought that were not connected intuitively enough. And it was really hard, and this is where all the managing came in, really hard for me to try and fit them all to together. So took a step back, did some experimentation, did some more tours of other people's uh, Zettelkasten or Second Brain workflows on, on YouTube. And the one that really inspired me the most was Bo Han's uh, block-based Zettelkasten system. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, I found that really interesting and it looked like it was going to solve a lot of the problems that I was having with my system for how I was going about it and thinking about the knowledge that I had. So I have implemented it in my own kind of way in LogSeq, now using LogSeq more than Obsidian. So I thought for this video, what I would do was rather than go through the structure of my system or, or all of the theory behind it or how everything is is set up, I would actually take some time to process a literature note in my system so you can see it in action. So let's dive in and take a look at how my new system allows me to process literature notes into evergreen notes. Okay, so let's pick out a couple literature notes to process that I think might uh, be interesting and kind of related to what I'm doing here. Number one is you see other people's systems in presentation rather than execution mode and then leaving room for chaos in your digital mind. So if I click on each of these links in the query, it'll just open them up in the sidebar and then I can see not only the full literature note itself that I wrote, but I can see where it came from. So I can see that these ideas were something that I got from listening to a podcast with Oliver Berkman. And if I wanted to go back and get further inspiration from the source, I can, or I can just work from, from my literature notes. So I'm thinking here now about, okay, how are these literature notes? How do I think that they're connected or where do I think they want to, to live? And, and if I look at the buckets that I've already created over here, I see personal knowledge management design. So these are things that you want to keep in mind when building your own personal knowledge management system. And so if I open this up, you can see that I already have some evergreen notes written here. And I can first have a scan through and of what I already have written to, to get more of the context of whether or not these literature notes are going to support or bolster or adjust an evergreen note that I already have written or if it's going to be something new. And this, you see here that's highlighted, this is something that I really like that came from Bohan's 
uh, Zettelkasten system, which is this low resolution thumbnail. I don't have to read through the entire text of my evergreen note to kind of get a sense of what it is that it's trying uh, to say or what it has to, to, to be about. So I can see, you know, if we talk about PKM design, making it scalable, next actions, output oriented, flexible, collisions, time delay, friction, start simple. And, okay, start simple, this might apply, but I think it has another, another connotation. So it's more a, a different idea. I'm, I'm going to start with it being a different idea, just so you can see creating a, a new evergreen note. So I have a template set up. So let me load it up here. And I have a checklist created to remind myself of a few things that I want to make sure I do when I'm building an, an evergreen note. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move over the literature notes from their source to this, to this evergreen note. So I'm going to copy the block references first. And then I am going to place them in the literature notes section. Then I'm going to use a plugin that I have installed, which is the LogSeq swap blocks plugin that you can get from the marketplace. So what this allows me to do is to right click and swap original blocks with the child, with the block reference. So now I have the literature note right here instead of being underneath the reference note. So I can more easily refer to it and work with it, but it is still linked back to the to the source. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this on the side so that I can work with it. And the other thing that I'm going to do to remove it from the query now is if I just get rid of this PKM note, then I know that that will uh, no longer show up in this query. So that's how I get the literature notes out of out of the queue to be to be processed. So now I have my raw material here to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read my literature notes. I'm going to highlight any poignant sections and I'm going to refer to the source material as needed. So I'll fast forward through as I do this. Okay, so what I did here, I took a little bit from Tiago Forte's progressive summarization, but rather than going through all the levels and doing it on source material, what I've done is on my own writing, and I'm just trying to highlight some of the different points that I think might relate to, to this idea. So that is the, the, the first step done, I'm kind of priming my my mind for the note that I'm going to write, what is it that I want to crystallize out of this. And then the next thing to do is to spend some time writing my fleeting notes to develop my thinking even further. Now there's a couple reasons why I want to do this. One is this idea that you need to do a lot of bad writing or do bad work before you get to the good stuff. So if I just sit down and start trying to write this evergreen note, it's not going to be as good as if I had gotten started by just kind of putting uh, a bunch of ideas, like brain dumping my ideas in this fleeting note section. And I also find that putting it in this fleeting note section gives me a little bit more permission to be a bit messy. As you can see here that I highlighted in my literature note for leaving room for, for chaos is thinking is messy. So I'm giving myself a space where I can be deliberate in being messy with, with my thinking. And the other thing is this quote, I believe by E.M. Forster that says, how do I know what I think until I hear what I say? And so if I just try to immediately write this this evergreen note, then I'm not giving my chan a chance for my subconscious, my, my thoughts on the subject to kind of boil to the surface. I need to engage in some form of communication in this in this way, communication with the page in order to see what I actually uh, think. And then this will also help 
generate those connections, those ideas as I'm writing. So I'll, again, fast forward through uh, this section as I write out some fleeting notes around this, this topic. Okay, so I have written a few fleeting notes. I think I'm, I'm starting to get a sense of what this, this note is going to be about. So the, the next thing that I have on my list here, and actually let me just go into opening it up by the block. So if I just click on the little block symbol, then I can kind of remove a lot of that distraction that that's there. So are there any actions, insights, or personal observations that I might want to include in this in this note? So now that this is in the main body of the note, and I have little emojis to uh, kind of bring these things to the to the surface. So I think you know one actionable item is don't try to copy another person's method. Try to understand their the principles principles behind what they're doing. So under so I think that is something that's something that's coming out of this this note. And then I also know that there is a quote that relates to this that I'll want to find later to to put in. So I'm just gonna give myself a little follow-up action. So that's just how I'm tagging myself to, to know that I want to do something else. There is a follow-up action for this for this note. And then and then personal observations, I can say that you know I've experienced this a lot myself. You see something that's interesting or cool or flashy and you try to make it work within your system, but it might not fit or fit with the overall flow of what you're trying to do. So I, I'll probably just put something to that uh, effect here. So now, after doing all that kind of writing and work and steeping myself in this thought, now comes the time to actually write the evergreen note title and I want to make it sure that it's a descriptive claim because I want to get the information out of the title rather than having to always go into the full body of the note. So I'll kind of just think on this reviewing what I had written and see what is the idea that I want to come out of this. What is the atomic idea? Okay, so now I have created this Evergreen Note title. And again, it's just a a draft. I will always be able to come back and, and change this. So the idea is to create space in your digital mind for messy thinking to occur, attempting to create a perfectly organized system that mimics what you see from others will rob you of the entropy required for insight. Um, so I think that captures the essence of what it is that I was writing. Now the reason why I'm not putting anything in this this page title is because if I wanted to change this, you know, if I wanted to change the wording in here, I can just do so and I don't have to worry about losing the link to what was in it. Because if I change this and it's something in the page, then I'm actually creating a new page and losing the content uh, link with within that. So that is is one reason why. The other reason why I don't just make it plain text is because if I wanted to search for a this idea again, then I can do so by using a page search. So I could look for uh, digital mind. That's going to return me a lot less results than if I did a block-based search with the curly brackets. And it's going to be a lot harder to kind of find this idea in the future. So when I'm linking notes, 
being able to search based on this page title is just going to allow me to pull it into another note a lot, a lot easier and more simply. But now if I look at creating a row, low resolution thumbnail, so I, I want to think about if I was scanning through that list of evergreen notes like I was at the beginning, what is the quick few words that are going to give me a sense of what this is about. And I might say messy here. Now what I can do is I can go back. So now I can see it within the context of everything else. Uh, and I don't have messy here underneath anything. So I think that personal knowledge management design, messy. Okay, I think that gives me a sense that I, I don't want to make it perfect. I want it to be a little bit messy. So I'll go back in here. I've done that. I've created the uh, low resolution thumbnail. Now what tag notes should be included? You know, when would I want this note to resurface in the future? And I'll just say digital mind. If I was searching for digital mind or if I was looking at all the notes that I had on digital minds, I would definitely want this one to come up here. And then the other thing, like I said, because I might want to be able to search this in the future, uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I had this note about digital minds and, and messiness. So because I'm going to be searching based on the page name, I want to ensure that I have those keywords in the title. And I want to think in terms of what am I going to be searching for? So digital mind, yeah, messy, that that might be something that I that I remember. You know, creating organized systems, mimicking or, or an entropy and, and in, insight. So I, I think I have enough keywords in here that so when I go to search, if I'm like, okay, I, I think mimic is in the word. You can see how easily now that page is the only one that, that's going to come up. So I can play around with searching by making sure that I just have the keywords included in the title rather than having to use a bunch of tags to get it to work. And so now that is done. I can delete my checklist and I now have created a new evergreen note that will live within my uh, personal knowledge management system. So that is it for this video. It was a little bit different showcasing it in action, a little bit more messy and, and longer. Let me know if you liked this style of video. I can certainly do more of them in the future if you found it uh, useful and interesting. I would love to hear about it down in the comments below and I will see you all next time.